So, I normally just upload videos of concerts, um, but I'm going to do a story time like a real YouTuber because I noticed Steve Wozniak is celebrating his 70th birthday and um, seems like a good time to tell you about the time when Steve Wozniak, inventor of the Apple computer, gave me an Apple computer. Um, so, yeah. Um, just start by by saying you should go to wasbday.org and uh, .com sorry and have a look at his birthday celebrations which are still ongoing as I re as I record this. Um, also maybe donate to his favorite charity, Inspiring Children, or at least the charity that his birthday is is uh, supporting. Um, yeah, uh, so just a quick intro. I have cerebral palsy, which um, it. You can't really see it when I'm sitting down. It mostly affects my legs, but actually it affects my whole body. And when I was eight or nine, I was assessed and they found that I only have 50% use of my hands, apparently. I can use both of my hands, the, the, the right hand much better than the left, but uh, a lot of people when I say I have 50% use of my hands ask which one, so I thought I'd get that out of the way. But apparently I write a lot slower than the average person and so they decided I needed a computer to do my schoolwork on, although in those days, this was 1988-89, um, it was a word processor, it was not a computer. Um, I got a Panasonic WP-1000 uh, luggable word processor. Uh, it had a daisy wheel printer, so that's like a typewriter, but you type in all of the stuff first and then it types it all out really quickly when you when you tell it to print. It sounds kind of like a machine gun. Well, I've never heard a machine gun. I guess a machine gun is a lot more terrifying, but yeah, it's, it's loud. Um, so I had that, uh, I think funded by the Board of Education or something when I was eight or nine, and then when I was 14, or actually 13, in 1994, I had the choice to get a laptop. I could choose either a Mac or Windows, and we had Macs at my school, so I was already kind of an Apple fan, um, and I chose a Mac. And on Valentine's Day 1994, I met my true love, a uh, Macintosh PowerBook 145B. It was a black and white laptop with a trackball, and I mean, this disability thing is pretty sweet, huh? Like normally, when when somebody who has a disability gets something for free because of that, it's just to bring them up to the same level as everyone else. And in this case, it was so that I would be able to write as fast as everyone else and not get behind on my schoolwork, but. I was already programming on my brother's VIC-20 and Commodore 64 and my brother's and my Amstrad, so I could program on this Macintosh and yeah, you, you can't program with your pencil and paper, so it, it was a pretty cool advantage for me actually. Um, I, I have my notes on my iPad, so if I'm looking down it's just to make sure that when I ramble, I'm rambling in the right direction and uh, getting all the details in that I wanted to say. So, in 1995, I won a writing competition and I used the prize money to get a modem and a year of internet. And, among other things, I, I discovered was.org, which is Steve Wozniak's website. And he had a huge archive of letters from fans and, and his replies to them just a, a big Q&A, because he spent, he, I think he said somewhere on there that he used to spend 20 hours a day replying to emails from fans, which seems ludicrous, but he is extremely generous with his time and, as we all come to find out, his money. I mean, really buying me a laptop is, is a drop in the bucket of the kinds of things he does. Um, so I actually sent him a letter. Um, because I'd heard that he always used to, to play phone pranks on people and then he always wanted to have a phone number that was all one digit 
And when he finally got a phone number that was all one digit, he got a lot of calls from babies that were just pressing the one digit. And it was, it was kind of like a phone prank back from the universe. Um, so I just emailed him to ask if that story was true and he replied with some extra details and some other things that happened with that phone number which I will link in the doobly-doo to that question and answer because it's still on his website. Um, this is relevant to something that happened later. Um, so then I went to university in 1998 and 1999 I got another laptop, uh, this time funded by an organization called WorkBridge. I think, I'm not sure if I remember to mention, the previous one was funded by a, an organization called TalkLink. I have no idea whether these organizations still exist. Um, but uh, I got a PowerBook 1400CS. It was color. That's what the CS stands for, I think. Uh, and had had this customizable back cover like there was a plastic thing that was behind the screen uh, which they gave you a couple of different colors and you could buy different ones I, I just had the standard ones that it came with um, but it also had a clear one so you could just print your own pictures or whatever and, and customize the cover of your laptop it was pretty neat um, so that was 1999, I think I got that. And then in the year 2000, when I turned 20, my sister Liz said that she had a surprise for me for my birthday. And I actually immediately guessed, and I didn't tell her this, so there's no way I can prove that I guessed it, but somehow my very first thought was she's going to get Steve Wozniak to call me on my birthday. And <laughs> she did. Like, she just emailed him saying, hey, my sister's a big Apple fan, would you call her on her birthday? I mean, I don't know exactly what she said, but something along those lines, I guess. And he called me, and I remember, I, I had an old Alcatel phone, and I remember thinking, ooh, I'm, she says I'm going to get a phone call, I wonder if I'm going to see in the caller ID this, this phone number that's all one digit. But no, it actually just showed all zeros, because I guess he had caller ID suppressed. Um, anyway, we talked for 5 minutes and 23 seconds. Not that anyone's counting. I mean, my phone counted and... Yeah, so I, I don't actually remember much about what we talked about. I remember he said something about being impressed by people who were good at maths or something and it might have been because I mentioned I was studying maths at university. Uh, anyway, that was really awesome and my sister is really cool and, and I'll link to her to her YouTube channel and stuff in the doobly-doo. Um, and so, yeah, now that was in 2000 and then early 2001 I was at my sister's place with my boyfriend at the time, whose name was Steve, because at that point, uh, as an Apple fan, I'd graduated from only being in love with my power book to also finding some love for people named Steve. And as we, we left my sister's place, we were planning to get a bus back to Steve's place, and then as we had walked down the road a little bit, we decided to get a, a taxi instead, and Steve went into a phone booth to call a taxi. I'm not sure why we didn't have cell phones with us, because I, I, I remember I had a cell phone before that that was called me on, but maybe it was too expensive to make phone calls. Or, I mean, back then phones didn't run out of battery, so it can't have been that. Anyway, he called a taxi from a phone booth. And half an hour later, as we were arriving at Steve's place, we realized that Steve, who had been carrying my MacBook at the t my power book at the time, they weren't called MacBooks back then, uh, had left it in the phone booth. Um, and so we were pretty frantic. Steve was blaming himself, pretty mad at himself, and he went out on his motorbike to go look for it. We got my sister to run down the road to the phone booth and see if it was still there. Uh, it was not still there. And so my laptop was gone. And um, 
I mean, obviously, you can see why I'm not with Steve anymore. You don't leave my laptop in the phone. No, it's actually, no, it's not true. We, we stayed together for a while after that. Um, so, as I mentioned, the, the laptop had this book cover, which had a lot of pictures of things I liked on it. And it actually, this book cover that I designed um, quite a while earlier, had a picture of my previous boyfriend on it. His name was not Steve, which is why, probably why we broke up. Uh, and I just hadn't got around to updating it to have Steve on it. And actually, the day before this happened, I had thought, okay, I, I can't just have my ex on, on the back of my laptop. Uh, and I, I cut out uh, Steve's address and name, and I don't know if there was a phone number, um, out of a out of a letter that he had received, and I just stuck that over top of the face of my ex boyfriend. So we thought, well, at least whoever has my laptop, they have Steve's contact details, and maybe they'll call him and give it back. And they did call him, but they were asking for a ransom of three hundred dollars, which. I mean, I've never really considered whether I would pay ransoms or not, or but I don't think I had $300 anyway. Um, so Steve ar arranged to meet this guy, but he also called the police so that the police would also be there to arrest him. And the police actually told Steve not to go, but he'd already told the guy, look, I'm going to be wearing this t-shirt, this is how you'll recognize me, so he thought he'd better go just so it would be easy to find the person. Um, and he, he went to meet the guy, the police arrested him, there were a lot of people laughing at the scene of this guy being arrested. Uh, apparently there were some people there that were eating ice cream and that they dropped the ice cream off their cone because they were laughing too hard. Uh, and meanwhile I was at Steve's place playing on his old Macintosh SE which was too fast for the games that it was running because the, the, they didn't have, the games didn't have any delays or timing or anything. It was just relying on being run on a 512k Mac or something, um, and uh, yeah, so so Steve Steve came back and told me the story about what had happened, but the guy that got arrested he didn't have my laptop with him, and we th we figure he probably had already sold it by that point. Um, he didn't say where it was. Uh, we didn't get it back. So, then I checked my email on Steve's Linux box, because I, I hadn't converted him to Mac yet, but I did. It just took time, you know. Uh, and there was an email from Steve Wozniak, or forwarded from Steve Wozniak, because my sister had emailed him saying, Hey, do you remember my sister that I got you to call on her 20th birthday? Well, she her laptop was stolen. Do you know of any organizations that could help replace it? Because I, it didn't seem like I'd be able to get another free one from the, the, the organization I got that one from. And I certainly couldn't afford a laptop. I was a student. Um, so he replied saying, You can tell me her address and I can send a laptop. It won't have her own data, but it will be new and modern. That might be a problem, as she won't have Macintosh serial ports, but rather USB and Firewire. So she may need adapters. My big problem is time, but I'll try to get it done. And... Yeah, he was actually apologizing for the fact that the new laptop would be all fancy and new, and have new ports and stuff, and I would need some dongles. Which is a very amusing word. Um... And he ordered a laptop from a local uh, Apple reseller, which we'd actually been to the night uh, the night that my Mac was stolen. Um, the reason I had my, my Mac with me was so we could go to this place and see whether they could fix the cracks on the back of the screen. Um, so anyway, he ordered it from, from this reseller 
And um, they actually thought it was a joke at first that they had an order from Steve Wozniak, but they knew that that was his correct email address. So they filled the order, and a couple of days later I went in there and I picked it up. And a, a, a Key Lime iBook Special Edition. And I actually kept the uh, invoice. I framed it, which is a bit ridiculous, but my life is ridiculous, so why not? Um, the order was was made on the 8th of January 2001. Uh, he paid 5,765 New Zealand dollars. And um, he actually added another 128 megabytes of RAM. This, this laptop already had twice as much RAM as the one that was stolen, but he just added, like it already had 64 meg. He tripled that. So it had then six times as much RAM as my previous Mac. He didn't have to do that. That's ridiculous. Um, and yeah, I, I had this Key Lime iBook and I went on a bit of a Key Lime kick. I actually had Key Lime streaks in my hair when I met Steve Wozniak a few years later, but that's a different story. Let me know in the comments if you want to hear about that. Um, so... Yeah, of course I emailed Woz and thanked him, and, and he replied, I can't respond to thank you types of email, except to say that I hope others remember such things and are inspired to do similar things when they're in the right situation. So, um, that's probably a good place to end. If, if you are in a situation where you can help somebody out like that, uh, especially if it's a thing like... Like with Woz, I, I'm sure that that 5,700 New Zealand dollars is hardly anything to him, um, but it was it was so much to me. I got to finish university on that Mac, and uh, I rewrote the the HyperCard stack that I that I didn't have a backup of that was on the old laptop uh, within two weeks because I knew exactly how to do it. I I, I wrote so many, I did so much with that laptop. Um, if you can ever be in a situation to do something like that for somebody, or if you don't have any ideas, of course there's the charity InspiringChildren.net, which Boaz's birthday is, is benefiting. Um, feel free to donate to that, or go to WazBday.org, I think there are some auctions and things going on. Um, yeah. Uh, that I'm not a real YouTuber, so I don't have a sign-off. Uh, let's see, um, make sure to like, comment, subscribe, smash the notification bell, and links in the doobly-doo. Bye.